Whether you are standing up a new SQL Server environment or migrating to a new on-premise or cloud environment, Diagnostic Manager can help a DBA understand how you need to size your environment in terms of disk storage and disk capacity. But you also need to consider processing power and memory usage that will ensure optimal performance of your new SQL Server environment. So where do I go within Diagnostic Manager to find this important information? Well, the first place I would start out is the summary view in my databases tab. So I'm already there uh, for my SQL 2012 named instance. All right, and the chart that you see below after I select a few of my uh, a few of my uh, databases here is uh, a chart below that shows my log my logs usage in megabytes here. So I can see the space used for my finance database, and I can also see the, the unused space for my finance database, also my SQL QT database as well. Uh, so, you know, you can not only see that uh, size information for your log, uh, log size, log file sizes, but also your data file sizes as well. So you can see the uh, amount of space taken up by tables, amount of space taken up by indexes, and just your unused space. And if we had any text uh, information here, we would also see uh, that space usage as well. And any of these charts that you see within Diagnostic Manager can be saved off as an image or exported to Excel. All right, next let's talk about reports. Here's where you can find valuable information on how healthy your SQL Server environment is running and the historical storage and forecasted footprint as well. All right, so if I go to the report section, uh, under the analysis report section here, which is this, this uh, area in the middle, uh, there is one server level report in particular that is compelling, and that is the baseline statistics report, all right? And that is in the server section again here under baseline statistics. The baseline statistics report reports, analyzes, and compares baselines within a single SQL Server instance and across two instances as well. When viewing baseline statistics for a monitored SQL Server instance, uh, you can compare the baseline metric at two different times or two different metrics at the same time. If you include another instance to compare to, you can compare the same baseline metric value occurring at the same time or different times. Baselines are calculated for particular metrics in, in Diagnostic Manager based off of a rolling seven days of history, and you can configure multiple baselines to measure expected behavior for SQL servers that experience a lot of off-hours processing, for example, um, whether it's uh, reporting and ETL processes or just other offshore development groups accessing that particular database. So I'm going to run this report for my 2012 named instance here. I'm going to select my page life expectancy value here. Where is it? There it is. And I'm going to select the last three days. All of these time frames are standard across all of your reports, including any custom reports you create. You can also create a custom range. I'm always going to select the last 30 days just to be consistent. And uh, you can optionally compare to another server, another metric at a different time frame. I'm just going to leave this as is. All right, you can see how my page life expectancy has gone up and down over time uh, in actual values and also baseline values here. So you can see it kind of went up a little bit. My blue is my baseline, and then it's gone down, uh, which is not good. Page life expectancy is kind of a measure of how uh, well we are. Uh, we, uh, SQL Server is uh, swapping pages in and out and lever leveraging those pages, and then it's kind of going up here towards the end. So definitely a nice upward trend as far as page life expectancy uh, here as well. And we can see the detail down below if you want to export to Excel, create different charts as well. All right. In the databases section, uh, there are also some very important reports as well as the resources section. So if we go to the databases section, we'll look at the database statistics report. So this database statistics report is used to uh, analyze and compare performance trends uh, across uh, one database or two databases uh, uh, if you so choose. All right. So again, I'll choose my 2012 named instance. I'll select my DM repository database that is uh, the most active here on my instance, 30 days. And I'll keep this at data growth percentage, but just know you can change the chart, chart type to data or log file size, data size, reads and writes per second, or transactions per second. All right. So let's see what this report gives us. So we can see the data growth over the last 30 days goes up and down here. Uh, and that's because the diagnostic manager does have aggregation and grooming or purge uh, processes to uh, account for and, and keep uh, that repository in, in check in, in, uh, in, in a reasonable uh, size. All right. uh, the next report I'll show here is the top tables uh, by growth here. 
All right, so again, selecting my 2012 named instance, and this report is going to identify the fastest growing tables on my particular instance here. And we can identify those fastest growing tables uh, by a few different metrics here. So number of rows is a, is a good metric, data size, text size, index size, but I'm going to count for all of those three sizes uh, with total size here. All right, and I can optionally uh, apply additional filters, uh, check this into a, a particular database here. Uh, I'll select my DM repository again, just to be consistent. Uh, we can also apply size and row count uh, filters as well. All right, so within my DM repository databases, uh, my, let's see here, my server activity report seems to be the highest, and over the last three days it's grown uh, quite a bit here, and to a lesser extent, my other tables seem to be uh, a little bit more stable here. So, and we also get uh, a breakdown by the various other uh, metrics that we didn't chart here, uh, tables by size growth and row growth percentage, uh, table, top tables by number of rows here. Uh, so you'll see some different tables for all of these other metrics here. Some reports of interest in the databases section here uh, uh, as well, uh, we, we've just gone over, but there's also some uh, reports uh, that are uh, applicable in our resources section. All right, so the first one I wanna point out is our CPU statistics report. So we can track key CPU uh, performance metrics here, all right? So if we select the last 30 days, so this report is important to run uh, so that you uh, can, can understand, okay, what's the CPU usage over the last, uh, you know, again, 30 days last year, however long that server has been active here. And I'm, I choose to show the baselines when I can, because I like to understand the expected level of performance of our SQL server as far as CPU goes. All right, so we can see our baseline is kind of aligned very closely with our uh, actual CPU usage here. The blue is the, uh, uh, the uh, baseline here, and, and the uh, green is the uh, OS CPU usage. Oh, I'm sorry, the blue is the uh, uh, SQL Server CPU usage. And we can also see our processor length as well as our uh, compilations and recompilations. So these are important metrics to track to see if you need to maybe up that processing power in your new environment. We also have a disk stats uh, report as well that you can run again over uh, the last 30 days on a particular instance here, which is what I'm gonna choose. And uh, again, I'm gonna show that baseline just to, to understand the expected level of performance here. So my IO activity uh, uh, in, included with my baseline is, is, is pretty low overall because um, I have a lot of memory it's, uh, it allocates. Uh, in the work files per minute, uh, you can see the baseline uh, that uh, aligns pretty closely with the actual values per minute. Temp DB size, you can see there's some spikes here at the beginning, but what I actually did was uh, to cut down on some of that IO, uh, it was to you know uh, come up with a temp DB size estimate, and that seems to have been working pretty low. There's a little spike uh, up and down here activity, but overall the baseline remains constant and actually seems to be going down currently. And then you can see the other metrics charted down below. We also have a disk space history report that will, uh, you, where you can view the history uh, of activity for a specific disk here. I only have one disk in my virtual environment, so this makes this report pretty easy. Uh, so you can uh, chart our, on different uh, metrics here, data used, free log file, uh, free disk, disk reads per second, writes per second here. I always like to uh, report on SQL data used since I'm trying to uh, forecast my new uh, space usage for my new environment. All right, number of days, and I choose my disk here. Right. So let's run this report, see what we get. So you can see my SQL data used on my uh, C drive here, the only drive I have here, uh, seems to have started out uh, uh, 30 days ago at uh, about seven, uh, 7 gigs here, and then it seems to have, have gone up uh, close to 9.4 and then leveled off a little bit more, probably uh, around 9.3 or so or 9 gigs here. So, um, you know, showing some more constant growth after a little bit spike uh, the last 30 days, so I may want to extend this back even further. Okay, but some of the more important reports that we have are uh, that will forecast the growth of your disk usage, your database growth, and your table growth. You can also choose different uh, forecasting types, linear or exponential, uh, when running uh, your plan reports here. All right, so uh, if I just select my normal parameters, that's 30 days, uh, I always like to keep my forecast units in, in alignment with my uh, time period that I'm uh, uh, selecting, in, in this case, 30. Uh, and um, 
uh, what uh, we can do here is actually select a different forecast type. So what do these linear uh, forecast and exponential forecast types mean? So a linear forecasting type will allow you to trend the available data and extend that forecast out in a straight line by the number of forecast units. All right, so um, if we run this report, let's see what we get. So over the, the, the next 30 days here, uh, based off of our last 30 days of data, it, it looks pretty constant. So, you know, there may be a slight downward trend, but uh, that's kind of hard to tell. So, so I'll just chalk this up to, hey, you know, it's going to be fairly constant here. What happens if we change this to exponential? Now, exponential uh, is going to exaggerate that uh, data trend that exists in the data to see if the, if the trend is, is more away way or, or, or towards a critical threshold. So if the great rate of growth is not constant, the exponential forecast type usually will give a more for, uh, accurate forecast of future growth here. So since it's not, uh, so, you know, it, it looks like it is um, pretty constant, but let's see what we get here. And again, it's going to be the same, same, exact same, you know, graph. You know, it's going to be a constant, you know, leveling off at whatever this is, 90 gigs or whatever the value is. Okay. Now we can also see this for a uh, database growth forecast here. Um, I find this particularly useful when uh, uh, looking at particular databases that are migrating or consolidating over to another virtual environment. All right. So I'll just choose one repository and I'll choose the last 30 days. All right. And again, I'll choose linear. I'll change my forecast type to 30. So let's see what we get from my DM repository. So I, so we're showing actually a, a pretty sharp upward trend here uh, of data growing at about uh, at just over uh, a gig here, or 1.1 gigs to uh, you know over uh, about 1.3 gigs here. All right. So uh, again, um, this is just working off the upward trend of the data, and you can see uh, that that um, uh, looks to uh, be fairly accurate. What if, happens if we choose exponential here? So this is going to exaggerate that up and down that we see here in the last 30 days. And we can see that, hey, since it's going up and down, up and down, it's going to exaggerate that. And it kind of goes up uh, during the middle of, of June here. And then it's expected to kind of go down and level off at uh, about where, where it's kind of started out at. So uh, right here. So, um, you know, that is actually probably more accurate since Diagnostic Manager does have grooming and uh, purging uh, or, or, or grooming or purging and uh, aggregation procedures to uh, keep that uh, uh, that uh, database in check. All right. We can also do this at the table level. We can select multiple tables in a particular database here. Again, I'll select my DM repository as my model. And uh, I like to select a, a few here, alerts. Uh, I think we saw database statistics in uh, one of uh, our reports in the past here. And uh, I think that's good. I'll just select two just to keep it easy. Last 30 days, forecast units to 30. Again, I'll just leave this as a linear forecasting type. And we can see for these two tables, uh, they are growing again at a constant rate based off of their past uh, growth here. So that looks you know, to be pretty accurate. You know, it's what, uh, 140 megs and probably close to 150 megs and uh, for my uh, dash, uh, database statistics report and uh, starting and starting out uh, currently at what about 50 megs and going to uh, close to uh, 65 or, or 70 meg range. All right, so again, let's try exponential to see the difference. And we can see that these are, are expected to go up a little bit more sharply here. Um, but again, you know, you, you know, you'll have to see, you know, in these in these tables as well, um, you know, uh, do collect data quite. Quite frequently, alerts, especially alerts, uh, are captured with every snapshot of Diagnostics Manager, so that may be somewhat realistic. All right, so hopefully you were able to gain some insight on how Diagnostics Manager can help uh, you as a DBA, um, you know, forecast and um, you know capacity plan for future uh, growth of environments and databases and tables and, and lots of other things, uh, CPU memory consumption, things like that. Okay, so I appreciate your time and have a great day.